Okay. Welcome, welcome everyone on this Tuesday, the 16th. Um, welcome to our first session for 2021, our knowledge sharing session, uh, which we have kicked off at Game to Change. Um, and these are going to be something that we're going to be doing regularly. Um, just sharing with our community, also promoting our excellence in learning design program. So, so taking snippets from that. And I think for, for the first session is something that I am definitely very passionate about, is how to immerse your learner in a great story. Uh, so, so we're really going to cover that um, today, um, sort, of, sort of some key points um, to give you some creative inspiration. Um, myself, Deirdre Jensen, I am the Managing Director of Game to Change. My passion is how do we, how do we create learning um, to actually create change um, amongst, amongst people. So, so what, what could that entail? Stories, gamification, digital learning. And um, you'll see to my right is a Simon Walk who is um, going to be joining me. And Simon has a background in, in multimedia and, um, and, and yeah. visual arts. Games, films, that's kind of been my whole whole kind of life so far and it's, everything has been a story basically. Right. Cool. So what's on the story? Yeah, so, so what we want to cover in this session is firstly we want to just give you a very brief overview of the power of storytelling and why is it so effective um, then we're going to be looking at the arc of a great story what is the hero's journey and then we're going to be looking at a great story what does that entail um, and finally how can you actually integrate story into learning design um, and then five pointers just in terms of what to keep in mind when you are doing your learning design and you want to build a story into that. So that's what we're going to cover um, during the session. So I think I'm going to kickstart off the power of storytelling. Um, and as, as we all know, um, you can't really give a fact or a statistic across. It's so much more powerful when you wrap it up in a story. And I want to share really interesting, um, as I was um, researching this and, and just to get some background context to it, I want to share really interesting um, uh, anecdote that happened in 2003. Um, so it was um, actually 2009, Rob Walker, who was an author at the time, decided to conduct an experiment um, on eBay. So he thought, I'm going to choose 200 random objects um, that are sitting out there. Um, at the time, he purchased those, um, those random objects. Um, they cost him $129. And then he approached um, two, 200 authors. And he invited them to write a story around each of these objects. Um, and, and a very interesting one is one of the objects that were being sold, um, I think it was $9 at the time, was a horse's head, a porcelain horse's head. And each of these authors um, had a couple of weeks to compose a story about this object um, and really what it meant. And they had full creative license. And Rob took all these stories and then he posted it on um, eBay. And interestingly enough, those those objects then retailed $8,000. So you can just see through that anecdote how powerful a story is and how much meaning and value it brings to us where a random horse's head all of a sudden jumped from $9 to $60 and exactly the same with the other item. Um, so that was a really interesting experiment that was conducted. And the reason for this, and I'm sure you probably may already know this, is stories really are part of our nurturing. I mean, if you think of us growing up, um, there's so many fables, there's so many fantasies um, on, on uh, what our, our, our parents read to us. I'm sure you, you maybe read to your parents, there's certain stories around it. Um, and, and I think one of the really interesting things and in phenomena recently is the whole video game industry and it really is a cultural phenomena and 
the generation coming through that is being immersed in stories through those games. So, so it really is woven into our fabric as a society. So that's the nurture part. I think if we look at the nature part, um, which is even more fascinating and why it has been part of our culture is we actually wired to take in information and communication through story. Um, so, so for myself, I started to, to read a really a book that I've been dying to read, but it's really thick, it's called Shantaram about um, an ex-convict's adventure in India. And the interesting thing around reading the story, and it's taken me a while to get into it, is I'm starting to feel like the story is not just a story, I'm in the experience. I'm starting to and get to know the characters. I'm starting to, to wonder what happens next. I feel like I'm part of this adventure. Um, and I've also felt it obviously in movies and TV series. And the interesting thing around that is that um, we, our brains really battle to find the difference between a story and experience. And that's why we can get so immersed in a story and why it's so powerful and why some of the lessons and the information, it's, it becomes very memorable. So they've actually proven that data that is wrapped in a story is 65% more uh, is 65% remembered more than just plain data, which is remembered at a rate of 6%. Six, 6%. Um, the other thing that stories really induce in us it, from neurochemically is um, the feel-good hormones, um, feel-good cocktail, dopamine, oxytocin, endorphins. So, I mean, when you're watching a suspense or a spy thriller, um, the other night um, I watched um, that um, Angelina spy thriller, um, called salt and I was on edge um, and afterwards um, I had to do some work and I was extremely focused and I realized it's because all the dopamine going through my system and um, similarly when we are shown universal stories um, induces oxytocin and as you know oxytocin when a mother gives birth that is one of the, the key hormones and, and it really is about it makes us more open it makes us more receptive we want to connect more with people and then endorphins through comedy and laughter also make us open and receptive to the message coming through from that. Um, and then really stories, they're universal themes and challenges. And, and when we, we, we immerse ourselves, we read or we watch a story, we really can relate. You know, there, there's certain themes and Simon's going to speak around it. And we can relate to some of those challenges and some of those hardships and also some of the successes. And I think that's also where it's really powerful in learning is that learning gets framed from a very transactional experience to something more transformational. So, so if you are on a, a journey, rather than just going through a set of learning, um, learning modules and you're actually overcoming challenges rather than doing assessments, it, it sort of brings out a different part of you in that experience. And as you can see, I mean, this is just a very quick snapshot. Um, stories have been part of our culture for hundreds of thousands of years. And the interesting thing is how it's evolved. So it went from, from talking to very much cave painting, um, that was 27,000 years ago, to recently um, with the printing press um, through text. Um, and, and more recently is stories have really become multi-sensory experiences. With, with our um, with movies, with series, with video games, they've become totally immersive uh, and totally mm -hmm. central to how those are are created. I'm going to so I'm going to hand over to Simon now just to speak about the constructs of a good story and. Um, there's a couple of them, but we're gonna we're gonna highlight one that is particularly um, that is particularly common and plays out in a lot of different ways. Yeah, when you say by construct, this is what we're talking about when it comes to like a format of a story or like the general beats and the narrative uh, structure when it comes to story. And you know, not every story is gonna have these same same elements. But the one that we want to talk about, which is actually the hero's journey is prevalent in a lot of mainstream media, especially some, most of your superhero films, 
uh, a lot of the good feel good movies that you see now is comprised of the hero's journey. You know, the hero's journey was originally created by uh, Joseph Campbell, and he was busy researching or studying the Odyssey, the famous Greek uh, Greek myth um, or story. And he started noticing that there were similar patterns or similar narrative beats that started showing up in the Odyssey when he was looking into it. Um, and also other Greek myths, things like Hercules. And he noticed that it generally followed a similar pattern of events. Every kind of hero or every kind of hero's journey had this kind of original start where the character doesn't know anything to this being shown a mentor who helps them guide them through this journey to then overcoming the sort of bad person in the end and realizing their own faults. And what a lot of filmmakers have done is they've kind of taken this hero's journey and they've kind of made their own more easier to understand in some regards sort of structure. And I just want to kind of go through it with you guys and you will pick up on a few things. So if you start thinking about your favorite movies, maybe something like Star Wars or maybe something like Harry Potter, you'll start to see that some of these beats or some of these emo uh, emotional elements start to play through quite substantially. So the first is the establishing problem solving priority order. It's a whole bunch of big words, but essentially this means establishing the world in which the story is going to be taking place, establishing what the character might have to face against and where is the character centered in this world. And then it's the first explosion. The first explosion is where the character is shoved into the unknown, something that they have never thought they would be a part of. So in Star Wars, this could be, for example, when Luke finds out his aunt and uncle have died and now has to, well, essentially his reaction to it is going on this quest to save a princess, to deliver the Death Star plans. Um, and that's the reaction that the protagonist has. Then you start going into the problem solving attraction. So he's now thrust into this world that he's never been a part of. He now has to think of well, how can I prove myself? How can I succeed? And this is where the kind of problem attraction starts to happen. We start to think, okay, I can do this or I can do that. And what are the options I have available to me? That's where these digits come in. And eventually he starts to settle on, no, this is the action that I am going to take. So, and again, let's take Star Wars. This is when Luke starts to say, no, we can rescue Leia from the Death Star and they make that choice. Then it becomes the false victory or the new problem solving priority order. This is where the heroes think they have won and in fact has actually been duped. This is oftentimes when maybe the mental figure, the, you know, the OB-1 actually dies and now the hero has to forge a new path without them, without their alliance. So this is kind of the antagonist or the villain's victory where, and the hero's defeat but it's considered a false victory. So in this case, it would be maybe uh, Luke, Luke and Han eventually escaping from the Death Star and they realize they're actually being tracked. They are now leading the bad guys to their base of operations and it, it leads into the second, second explosion where they realize, oh no, if we don't do anything, we are going to die. The Death Star is gonna blow up our planet. And so this is where it quickly builds to a climax where they have to say, no, we are gonna fight them on our grounds. We're gonna assemble this, this fleet of spaceships and take the fight to the Death Star. And that is really the climax of the story. And then once they succeed, we get the final problem solving prior to order. This is where we settle down again. This is where the character who has gone from being on a desert planet has now realized his new life in space. And we kind of get this kind of closing grand ceremony. It's establishing the new world that these people are a part of. And you'll see these kind of emotional beats in other stories as well. Let's take uh, Lord of the Rings, for example, a great film. Um, but in Lord of the Rings, the very first kind of beat we see is that Frodo meets Gandalf. This is his mentor figure in the story. This is the person that he relies on. And then he kind of gets the first explosion or the first problem that he must solve is, do I accept the ring? Do I take on this journey? And of course, he goes and does it. And they slowly go on this adventure until they get to a point where they have to go to the Mines of Moria and Gandalf faces up against the Balrog, this evil demon-like creature and is defeated. And now Frodo no longer has a mentor figure 
all of a sudden they emerge from the mines of Moria and they start this battle with the orcs. And Frodo has to make a choice. Does he either give the ring over to Baromir or does he take the ring and go continue on the journey by himself? And he, of course, chooses to go and continue on the journey. So again, that's a good example of the hero's journey, just in a nutshell. But I think what we would like to find out, we've obviously been talking a lot about films, but maybe you guys have some stories that you are interested in. I think one of the things I wanted to ask is, yeah, what are you playing? What, and Deirdre, you obviously spoke a lot about what you're reading at the moment, but if anyone in the chat wants to link a book they maybe are reading or uh, yeah, something that they are busy watching, like maybe Bridgerton, um, <laughs> or I think the, hands, the Handmaiden's Tale, Season two is out. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to hear some people's thoughts. Mm. So, I mean, I, I wanted to say, I mean, I, I mean, we can just see it. They say that the average adult spends 36 hours a week watching um, watching TV and series. So, so that's how immersed we are. Um, and I know um, one, of, one of my favorite things is finding out what is the, the latest series. Um, and then getting totally hooked onto that. Also know that I really enjoy learning through stories. Um, so even with, with business books and, and, and certain areas where they share stories, it's definitely far more memorable uh, for myself. Um, yeah, so no, that's just on yeah. from my side. So I, I'm looking, I'm kind of reading one of the Neil, Neil Tyson Grass's uh, book on the universe. And it's, it's you know, it's very factual. Um, but what he does is he kind of tells the story of how the universe kind of comes about and the problems that it now faces. And he does it in a storytelling way. The, he kind of creates the universe as this kind of hero in a sense. Uh, and I find that quite interesting. Um, Great. So, so, I mean, one thing um, that I do want to also mention, we, we've obviously just given you one story arc, um, which is the hero's journey, which is really popular but there are six others. I mean, if you delve into this, there are certain um, uh, arcs that are used in different types of stories. And it's something that, that we go into more detail in our learning design session. And um, what we've also done for you is we've obviously spoken about the, the hero's journey, but we've actually mapped it onto a document, onto an arc of the touch points. And I think that can be really valuable. So I'm actually going to share it in the chat. It's in a Dropbox file. So all that you need to do is click on that and you can download the document. Um, and that'll just give you um, some pointers on what your average story looks like. And that's also great as we start discussing through learning design because your story has to support your learning design. Um, so please feel free to click on it and to download that, that, that document, that template um, for your own benefit. Yeah, something especially yes. to know about the Healers journey just quickly is that what you often find a lot in TV series is it doesn't happen in one episode. It is stretched throughout the entire season, so to speak. Movies generally encompass the hero's journey in this the one hour and 30 minutes. But really, it, yeah, with something like an episodic structure, you can stretch it out much further over time. Great. So I think let's, um, now that we, we've chatted a little bit about stories and, and and a little bit of basics around it. Um, I think just chatting about how do we uh, integrate storytelling in, in learning design. And, and, and we've certainly been on in the last year, we've been attending quite a few webinars around it, reading about it. And we also do sort of some game-based learning where stories are integral to that. So I wanted to just um, share with you sort of three approaches. Um, and it, it's no about by any means totally um, uh, inclusive. I mean, there are other aspects of it, but it's a really good way of just um, when you do want to build a story in to see what what approach will work best for your learning. Because at the end of the day, learning is the anchor, and the story is there to enhance it. And and the first one is a narrative based story. Um, and the narrative based story is very much where where the learner is looking in. They're not part of the story. It is more a case of of connecting and very much connecting emotion to the story. And in that story, finding certain learning points, um, connecting through the emotion, um, finding it um, relevant, 
So the learner is very much the witness to the story. And there's some great examples of this that are that I also wanted to share. Um, and I've put the links um, on there. Um, and the first one is a great one done by The Guardian. Um, it's about the First World War. It's done on, on um, a digital website. It's obviously done on a website, so it is digital. And um, this actually gives you, you'll see as, as if you want to click on, on that, it actually has seven chapters. And it takes footages from World War I and what happened. Um, and the key message as you move through that is, is to actually explain the horrors of, of war and how, how, um, how this had such a destructive impact for decades and decades um, in the world. And I guess it's, it's, this is a story to create awareness. And it's done very effectively with visuals, um, with audio as well. And I think in a narrative-based story, what you do need to realize is you need to make that narrative very relatable um, you can't make it something that's totally um, off the grid for your particular learner. It needs to be something that resonates with them. It needs to be something that they can relate to in terms of the characters. And um, so that's one of them. The other one is Rebuilding Haiti, um, which is also a great one. And we're going to share the, the link um, in, the, in the chat site as well. Um, this is also very nicely done. It's on a website, but very simply done with, with imagery, with obviously there is quite a bit of writing and if there are a few interaction points in the story that you go through, but very much the learner is looking in and understanding the challenges um, in terms of coming into this environment as an NGO and, and rebuilding it. So, so that's another example of, of narrative based storytelling. The next, um, the next approach is really case based stories. Um, and this you're probably familiar with is very much used in business schools. Um, and the thing is, we are social, social beings. So we learn from other people's stories. We learn from their, their challenges, their failures, their successes. And, and case study is very much where you take actual examples of what happened. Um, so, I mean, you know, Harvard made very famous the case study method, where they actually write it up into a story. Um, and they share that story as part of the learning. And through sharing that story, certain concepts and principles are, are, just, are, are, are demonstrated. And this is really great when you're doing something that's a little bit more complex. Um, you can see on our slide, we have the first case study, which is really about, it's a financial case study. So instead of just giving the figures, they've actually taken an organization and what they went through. Um, the second case study is very much in, in medical, and I mean very much a deductive reasoning. We have certain um, cases, and how would you, you solve those cases? So those are, are two examples. They're great at getting principles across. I think the thing to remember in this, it has to be realistic, it has to be relatable, um, or people won't learn from it because they're learning from the success or the failure of that case study. Something that I wanted to also showcase what we've done, and we did this um, for, for um, one of our clients uh, about a year ago, is we actually did um, complex selling skills, and um, we wrote up four case studies that happened in the environment. Um, the one was a, a, a logistics company, the other one was retail, then catering and medical. Um, and we used these case studies to demonstrate certain principles of how you sell, um, how you prospect, how you position. And we did put in interaction in it. So as they went through the case study and they got familiar with the different elements, they also had certain decision points. So I wouldn't say it was fully immersive, but it did demonstrate certain principles to what happened in those case studies. So those are just some examples of um, the case study method. And I don't know if anyone has um, used case study in, in their learning design or applied it um, when they've had to get a point across. I don't know if anyone wants to put anything in the chat room. Um, but it certainly is something that has been used um, for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, I'm going to go on to the scenario based uh, method. And this is very much where we immerse a learner 
into the actual story. And if you look at your interactivity level and you look at it from a digital point of view, um, this is um, one level just before going fully immersive game-based. And the whole idea is that the learner is actually central to, to the story and actually has to navigate the story um, through certain interaction points. And the scenario is about making decisions and choices. And based on making those decisions and choices, there are certain consequences. Um, so in this particular case, and, and when we do the design work, we use branch scenario. So, so they can navigate the story in a certain way and have a certain outcome. Um, and there might be a couple of different outcomes um, which come up and certain lessons which come from that. So, so one thing that we did and, and that I wanted to share, um, and Simon, if you can um, put the link, is we did a, we looked at um, uh, the area of compliance um, and just giving a good overview of the different compliance areas and what it covered. And, and we realized that it could be something quite dry. Um, and if someone's just going through legislation, you really could lose them. So, so for this particular example, what we wanted to do is we wanted to build it into something more engaging and, and, and fantasy-like. And we also wanted to juxtapose it with a pirate story. So it almost feels a little bit like adventurous, but it's around compliance, um, which creates a certain degree of tension. Um, and we had our, our pirate, and he had the option of starting out um, in a certain continent, and he could choose where he'd want to go. So I'm going to just show you a little bit about of this and how, how we did the branched um, scenario. Thanks, Simon. What I want to do is just show a little bit of how they actually navigated it. Okay, we can definitely do that in a bit. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe we can do that for the end. Yeah, let's keep that for the end and we can actually show you how you navigate it through that. So, yeah. uh, what we want to wrap up the session is just four pointers to consider um, in in designing your learning and when you want to actually build a story into it. Uh, so we're going to quickly chat around those and just some pointers to keep at the back of your mind. So I think the first thing is, is, is really critical is to establish a connection with your audience. So, so whatever story you are using, make sure it's something that resonates, that's relevant to them, that, that, that feels that feels real. I think you've got to be careful using fantasy, use it in the right context. Um, don't make it too over the top. And the second point of this is that um, you want to make sure that your story also can support your learning and your learning objectives. So, so that it doesn't feel disconnected. Yeah, this is quite a tricky one because it really is trying to understand your audience that you're writing the story for. And I think this leads back into what Tanya was asking about. It's like, well, you know, obviously we're not going to write the Lord of the Rings for people, but what can we do differently in, in this regard? And the, and the thing is, you can make your stories as big or as small as you want. It's just understanding what the story that your audience wants to listen to. I mean, your audience might be perfectly happy hearing about you or hearing about them being able to grow a garden, for example, or maybe they have to transfer, traverse a rainforest. 
and some of the events that might happen with that. So your story doesn't have to be large and crazy. It just has to relate back to your audience. There's something that they want to hear about. And I think that kind of leads into the next one, which is setting the scene. What's this about, Deirdre? So, yeah, so, so one of the key, the key things in, uh, in starting your story is really that, that first point. So you really have to get your learners engaged in, in what, you, what the story is about and also tying it into what, what you're going to want from them. Uh, and often we, we actually can shift learning objectives into actual challenges. Um, and, and this was just this is just a quick video. I mean, it's a very simple video where we, we had to we we did a project where you were going into these four different worlds, and before you went into the world to to answer certain questions and go through certain puzzles, um, you this video was to transport you and create that feeling of going into the Amazon. Yeah. So this was really when you when you kind of. Did it, use that we were trying to the look in the feel really because I think one of the important things when you're doing this kind of storytelling is hooking the people and making it as believable as possible because if we lose the hook or if we don't get people off on the on the right track the first time around they're not going to care about the rest of the story so it's really about setting the expectations um, almost immediately so to speak and uh, I think this also on another note it's also tying back to you can absolutely tell a story and have your learning objectives meet the moments in the story. So we go back to the hero's journey, like what, like if the first explosion is this world changing event, how does that relate to a learning outcome or how does it relate to the learner's journey? And that could be their first, maybe their first real test that they have to do, right? You can marry these narrative beats with the learning journey. So I think, yeah, I'm busy talking about that now, but maybe do to explain further how we can use structure and develop the story properly. So I think it's, it's really important that you can actually plot out the story and plot out that story that it connects with your, your learning objectives, that it connects with your, your interaction points. So, so as Simon showed us, there's a story arc that, that you can put together and if you've downloaded the template you can see there's various points and what you want to do and I think this is a bit of the creative work is you want to be able to to mirror what the story points are and the, the learning challenges or, or the, lear the information that's given so maybe first point of challenge you write a piece around the story um, so you you are um, as an example you're a cyber security expert, someone has broken into your system, um, you now have to decipher what could it be, here are the options. So that could be in terms of both testing someone's knowledge and understanding, and it could be a tension point in the story. So you can see how those two feed into each other. And I think when you do your design work is you actually wanna map this out right up front. So when you start going into the detail, you don't get lost in that and that the learning and the story unfolds to support each other. Yeah, and I think a little tip there is, you know, try and know where you want to start your story and know where you want to end your story on. Because then regardless of how, um, how much learning has to be done, you can fill in those middle parts as needed. But as long as you know where you're heading to and where you've come from, it's a lot easier to do so. So, yeah. So this is really about, I mean, I think this talks back to the story should really support the learning, um, not the other way around. Um, so as much as we, we are proposing um, and putting forward stories, the story should really be there to make sure that someone actually learns or a message is, is conveyed in that process. And I think that's where you want to be really careful to not make your story um, like Tanya said, with the Lord of the Rings, which is, is it could be very, um, cog you could create cognitive overload. So, so you've always got to be very cognizant of how much story do you put in that people aren't overloaded with learning and taking in a story. And making sure that those story points actually go right through the, the learning process and that there's a flow to that. 
Yeah, because um, I remember we a while back we did this we did a story or learning journey which was about a soccer team and you were the coach of the soccer team and all your actions that you did was to help the soccer team win matches. Um, and so every kind of activity you did was another like you was you basically you either was like a prep talk for the team or maybe it was a day match and you had to see how your players performed. Um, but uh, the whole way through we kind of like gave nudges or little tips uh, regarding this kind of story that we were telling, this coaching story. And then, so this yeah. really, yeah, I think this is about the visual appeal. And that's what's so great about a story is that you really can appeal to different styles and, and visually it's really important. And I think especially if you are doing e-learning is try and build in as much visual and make sure the visual is authentic to the story and to the learning and is something that the, the, the learner can relate to. Uh, also, if you can bring in audio, it just adds to that, that, that additional immersion element. Um, so this was, an, and I think, um, you know, there's such great tools out there where you can create these kind of short videos and embed yeah. them in your actual storyline or learning development. We just wanted to showcase something we did a, a, with an off-the-shelf tool. Um, and you can kind of feel what the, the, the ambiance set with this video. So I think that, yeah, that was quite a fun one to do or to work on. And I think it, what it does is you could do this at maybe the beginning of a story to really set the scene, to really get your players or get your learners invested. Um, and yeah, like what you said, I mean, we, you know, we, if we're doing digital e-learning, it's not just text, right? It is pictures, it is audio, and we should take full example of, full advantage of that when we do tell these stories. So I think those are just um, four key tips um, that we'd like to share with you. Just something that you can keep in the back of your mind when you are looking at, at bringing story into your learning design and just, mm -hmm. just making a more immersive experience. Um, the, the, the next point is just to, to chat a little bit about um, how we really dive into, into this. Um, so we have, um, we've launched an excellence in, in learning design program um, that we have um, learners on. Um, so we will, we, we run it around four diamonds, which is really taking design thinking and instructional design and elements of gamification and um, taking people through different elements of how to put um, an immersive learning experience together. And the nice thing about this is it is not um, just a whole lot of content. We actually get an action project from each person. And as they complete each diamond um, and each learning, they are building a gamified experience in which we give them feedback. And um, so as an example, um, what I wanted to just share in the, the storytelling section, which is part of Diamond 2, which is our design section. Um, and so I mean, if you move on to it, you'll see that our, our second gem is, is selecting a theme and a narrative. And we really dive into all the different types of templates and story arcs that can be used. Um, we also look at some of the tools um, in which you can create um, visuals and graphics and audio. So you don't need to outsource it to a full multimedia company. There's some great tools that are readily available out there who already have the graphics, who already have the animations. When we show you how to use those, we also show you how to actually do it in Storyline. So we show you how to build an avatar for your story. 
Uh, and you'll see in, in, in the example with the set sale, we create an avatar where people select their avatar and actually have to go through, through the process. Um, so we really take what we've share, shared with you here into a very practical way and into a way that you can actually start designing this learning. Um, we have an in-self study, we have live cohorts, and we have a coach that moves you through this uh, four diamonds. So that's just um, a little bit more if you really are interested and you really want to delve into doing creative learning design that is immersive. Awesome. I mean, let's take a look at that set sale that we've done because we are very proud of it. Um, and this kind of gives you a nice feel of maybe the story that you could create. So um, what we do is you choose a ship, you can um, give it your name. Uh, so, so you know, because this could carry on for quite, quite no, a while. But I, think, but I, do wanna just, example. I do want to talk a bit about what we're doing here, because this is something that is very important with a story is kind of how do you immerse your person into it? How do you give them agency? And you can do that by creating an avatar for them. You know, something that represents them in the story. And so for us, being able to maybe choose the ship that we want and give it a cool uh, name, like, I don't know. That's, that, that becomes my ship. And that's the ship that I want to now take on this journey with me. Um, I think, yeah, that's, I think it's a really cool moment. Okay, great. So, so thank you for your, your time. Um, 